Darren Goff, there weren't uh, very many slow patches in this test match, but then again, there haven't been very many slow patches in any uh, passages of play in any test matches that England have played in the last couple of years. The entertainment uh, flowed uh, as thick and as fast as the runs and the wickets did, and India were very, very good value for their victory, despite losing, uh, not having Virat Kohli available for selection, losing KL Rahul and Ravindra Jadeja. They were under pressure. England put them under massive pressure, and they responded. They've won again by 106 runs and deservedly so. Yeah, they were under pressure coming into this day, weren't they? I mean, we all dared to dream the impossible. Could it be possible? Uh, 399 needed to win on a day four pitch, but there was no real turn. I think that's what surprised me, really. Coming into day four in India, there was more likely to keep low off the bowling of Mukesh or Bumrah. But a quite magnificent performance from Bumrah in this test match to pick up nine wickets in, in a win and to level the series at 1-1. But what we've had so far in two test matches is two teams trying to work each other out. I think India know that England will believe they can win from any, any situation. India have to handle the pressure. They were better today. Rohit Sharma made better decisions as a captain. Their plans were better to some of the England batters. But I'll tell you what, we're in for a proper series here. Five test matches, after two it's 1-1. And anybody, it could go any way this series. It really, really could. So many individual highlights. The man of the match, I think rightly, was Yashasvi Jaiswal, the opener for his brilliant 209 on the first day and the second day, in fact. Um, and it, had it not been for his double hundred, in an innings in which the high, second highest score was 34, it would have been a very different looking test match. Um, but England have done terrifically to bounce back and make the second highest score of the match with 292. It defies the trend of uh, the Vizag Stadium in which scores descend through the, the four innings. And so uh, a resilient performance uh, from England. They tried, they believed uh, 399 was possible. Uh, Goffey. Um, they now go to Abu Dhabi. Um, they decamp to Abu Dhabi. So it's far too early uh, to look ahead and, and contemplate changes uh, for the third test match. Uh, they've got you know, a week of another week of rest and recuperation and preparation to come for them. Um, and it's uh, just lovely, isn't it, to have five test matches and have a big squad and play a rotation and who knows what's to come in eight days. Yeah, who knows? I mean, I think we've surprised everyone in England, but the spinners, so inexperienced, have done really well. I mean, who would have thought after that first ball from Tom Hartley, but he would come back and take the wickets he's taken in this Test Series so far? He's battered really, really well uh, down the order. I think Bashir has come in and done a decent job. Um, I, I would expect if Jack Leach is fit to come back into the, into the side and Joe Root take up the off-spinning duties. Harry Brook, will he come back? Two tests he's uh, been out for. I know they said he was going to be out for the series, but you never know. Um, will he come back? It's been pretty quiet, so I would doubt he will. Uh, but um, England can just go to Abu Dhabi now, reassess the situation, be proud of what they've done in those first two test matches. India, without doubt, were under pressure today. They were scared. They weren't 100% sure they were going to have the skills to deliver. And that's purely because England are playing a brand of cricket they're not used to seeing against them in their home conditions. And you could tell with some of the field settings and uh, the captaincy, but when it comes down to it, when you've got a bowler like a Jasper Bumrah in your armoury, it makes a big, big difference. Nine wickets, the pitch offered just enough for him. He's an absolute genius. He's got the full package, pace, the angles he uses when he's bowling, the slower ball, Yorker, bouncer, he's got the lot. So uh, that was the difference as well. Yeah, and Jasper Bummer, 9 for 91 match haul. Just a reminder, England uh, bowled out on the fourth day for 292 after a brilliant 73 from Zach Crawley, but they lost five wickets in the morning session, which seriously undermined uh, their hopes of pursuing what would have been a, a, a record a record in India of 399 for victory. Uh, 36 apiece for Ben Folks and Tom Hartley gave them late hope, but uh, it was all too much 
uh, too, too, too much too late really for, for England uh, alongside me Steve Harmson is, as always making assiduous notes and, and uh, lots of things uh, to talk about Jasper Boomer no doubt will be on the tip of your, your tongue um, Harmy he was, he was a genius and an exhibition of fast bowling in spin friendly conditions Jamie Anderson also in bursts was, uh, was outstanding uh, where, where do you want to start you've got a whole page of notes <laughs> yeah that Boomer for me you know, I, I said it was a the first thing I've wrote on the top of it was a fantastic test match and I think that again we talk about test match cricket dying we've had two test matches over the course of the last what is it eight days of test match cricket where test match cricket's not dying there's nowhere near dying you know the, the, the crowds have come out and shown that I think the skill level of the players have come out and shown that I think both individually and collectively England might think first innings runs which is always important out in this part of the world first innings runs is huge and to get only get just oh, just under 260 I think that's possibly where they could look and think that's how we we've, we've lost the game by 100 runs but I think I think forget the result in the end of it I am so proud of this England cricket team the way they've gone about their business over the course of these last two test matches. They were brilliant in Hyderabad. The inexperience of the bowling unit that's come into this from a, a young bowler's, spin bowler's point of view, um, really, it really excites me about the future being bright for England. I thought Zach Crawley in both innings was, uh, was as good as I've seen Zach Crawley bat from a balance and you know, timing point of view. Um, and a, a little bit of luck, you know, an element of luck when things go your way and it, it makes a huge amount of difference and I think there's a few umpires call decisions have probably gone more the, the odd one's gone probably in India's favour at crucial times and I'm not, that's not a whinge about you know, the umpires or decisions where they are India deserve to win this test match but I think when you come out to this part of the world especially with the inexperienced bowling attack that England have had and a few injuries that they've got I did say before the series everything would have to go their way every umpire's call would have to go their way and there's a couple in this game that just haven't gone the way of the away side and I think you know that that's so important when you come when you do come to you know to this area so all in all brilliant really was an, a great advert for test match cricket Jasper Bumra skill level with a new ball you know at, at the start his his next spell was going to be dangerous and then his spell when he got to the the, the new ball reversing be the one that finished the match off and as it as it it panned out it did and you know i'm so pleased to be here watching anderson and and um and bomber bowl on what was a relatively flat wicket coffee i need to ask you about england's strategy of the three spinners and one seamer uh because before this test match began it was clear that it was not going to be spinning sideways from day one it was never going to be a raging turner so England's uh, philosophy of playing three and three and a half spinners with Joe Root and one seamer seems to to lie in something beyond just the pitch and they have of course uh, Mark Wood Ollie Robinson and Gus Atkinson and I wonder whether whatever the pitch looks like in Radcock whether they might actually just say we, we need a second seamer yeah, I mean, we've been very fortunate, haven't we, to have a, an unbelievable all-rounder in Ben Stokes. Uh, before that, we had Andrew Flintoff. So two terrific cricketers who can change things with bat and ball and in the field. And it just goes to show when you've got someone like Ben Stokes' ability uh, to not be able to bowl because he's just come back from knee surgery, we do miss him. That would have been the obvious easy selection because he would have been able to play as that second seamer ball a few overs with a new ball and then ball when it reverse swings unfortunately he's not going to be fit this series and it puts us in a bit of a dilemma I think the history tells you but we've always played seamers and played two spinners but the opposition tend to play three so I think they've gone into this series trying to do things a little bit different we've put three spinners out there we had four in Hyderabad um, we've had four again, haven't we? With Joe Root. No, three with Joe yeah. Root, isn't it? Four with Joe Root. Yeah, so four, we've had four, four spinners. Four, yeah. yeah, and if Joe, they think Joe can do a good job, a holding job, take the new wall, um, I, I think you're right. I think somehow we need, especially if the surface is going to be like this one we've just had, where seamers can play a part. Jimmy Anderson was excellent, played a part. Bumrah for India played a huge part so um, we've got some good seamers there Ollie Robinson's got an amazing test record you've got Gus Atkinson who can bowl 
short spells and bowl quick spells. If you want him to bowl 20 odd overs, you won't be able to bowl at 90 miles an hour plus. No one can. No one can. But he's quick through the air, short spells, and he could do a job. Only if you want somebody a bit more like Jimmy, but I don't think that is the point. Or oh, you've got Mark Wood, who we know short spells, being able to throw it down there at 90 miles an hour plus can make a difference. And Woody can bat. Woody can slug you 20, 30, 40. No problem at all. Yeah, I think I think we missed the second second uh, seamer, but it's like anything else, man. As you come to this part of the world and you go, can we play 12? Can we play 13? Because you do need so many different options and that's always the conundrum when Ben Stokes can't bowl and nobody in your top six um, can bowl other than Joe Root and you, you're already picking three, three spinners, but... I think if they get to Rajkot, and what we've had is two, I think we've had two decent test match wickets in Hyderabad and, and Vishkapatnam. If we get to Rajkot and we play on a wicket, something similar to what we've played on here, I think England could do with sacrificing one of the spin options, having Joe as the third spinner and playing Mark Wood. I, if, if we, just for instance, fast forward it eight days and we come to Rajkot and we play on a wicket very, very similar to that, I think I'd be playing Mark Wood and Jimmy Anderson. Um, because I think the point of difference of the quick bowler, the express bowler, I'm with Goffey, I don't see the point of picking Robinson and Anderson. And I don't think I don't think Atkinson's as quick anywhere near as quick as what Wood is. So for me, Woody would play along with Jimmy. And finally from you, Goffey, a, a settled uh, top seven for England. I don't think there's going to be any changes contemplated there. A special word for Zach Crawley, 76 and 73. Uh, he's, uh, he's looking better and better technically. He turned... Uh, 26 uh, a couple of days ago and uh, he's he's uh, becoming uh, a lot more hit than miss isn't he he's becoming more consistent more solidly technical I think it's about a partnership and I think uh, Zach Crawley and Ben Ducky have been excellent at the top of the innings for a while now uh, for England they've got off to a flyer in every single innings but Zach Crawley this game was superb the way he played Bumrah who bowled beautifully the whole match he waited for that over pitch one that big stride he's got, he's a big tall man, he's Zach. He's got that big bat in his hand, the grey nick, it's a beauty. And he just has to get bat and ball and it flies away for four. He plays some wonderful, wonderful drives. Army mentioned his balance at the crease, the way he doesn't fall over. He plays it off his legs at hip high as well. He's a fantastic talent and we want to see that average rise. I think he only averages the low 30s, but he's a top, top player. Right, Goffey, um, we uh, have got the post-match presentation uh, taking place uh, on the field down below us and uh, we're hopeful to get uh, some of the captains uh, to hear from some of the captains. Harsha Bogle is part of our commentary team on TalkSport, is conducting uh, the post-match uh, interviews. And we'll have uh, Andrew McKenna speaking to Ben Stokes a little bit later on uh, on the uh, show, hopefully. But uh, first up, Harsha Bogle. In fact, let's listen to what Harsha and Ben have to say. Ben, you've come back from a deficit, but was 143 a little too too many? Uh, no, I think you know coming into this last innings, um, you know we were uh, had full belief in ourselves that we could go and chase that down. Um, you know the the way in which we go about um, sort of taking on challenges like that um, is, is sort of what we're about, um, and you know just sort of the number of runs that we needed to get was just sort of uh, another thing for us to try and uh, try and chase down and um, you know in moments like that in games when you've got you know scoreboard pressure a lot of runs to chase down you know that's where your process and um, the way in which we know that we get the best out of ourselves as individuals that really comes out and I thought um, today in which we applied ourselves and really tried to put India bowling attack under a lot of pressure uh, was great unfortunately you know we didn't end up on the right side of the result congrats to India thought uh, they played a fantastic game and, and again you know another great game to, to be a part of is there almost a directive to the batters to play a certain way or do you leave it to them because two fine players Crawley batted a little differently Root batted a little differently is it up to them or is there a suggestion from the captain no, there's no, there's no suggestion whatsoever about how to go out and play. It's go out and play how you, how you best feel um, at the given time. You know, we know that we knew the task ahead. Uh, we knew we had to get 330 runs today, and everyone in that dressing room there is, is a quality player, um, and they are good enough to be able to go out there, assess the, the sort of the conditions or the situation, um, and also assess how they're feeling and how they best feel to go about getting those runs. 
You've got a very inexperienced trio of spinners. Was, it was, was that a challenge, speaking to them all the time, trying to get the best out of them? They haven't been in these situations too often? Uh, no, I, I mean, it wasn't a challenge whatsoever. I absolutely loved it. Um, I think, you know, looking at Tom, um, Bash and Rayan, you know, five or six test matches between them to put in the, the performance that they did yesterday to, to you know, uh, obviously without Joe and um, Jimmy having bowled a very long spell at the start of the day, I thought what they were able to produce in terms of effort and out, um, output was, was incredible. Um, you know, they showed a lot of maturity, a lot of skill beyond their years and experience and it's something I'm very proud of as a captain. And Jimmy Anderson's going to bowl for another 30 years, isn't yeah. he? Oh, he's amazing. Um, you know, and as well, like, you look at Jimmy Anderson in the way that Jasper Bumrah bowled this week. I think you're watching two guys who are incredibly skillful bowlers. Um, and, you know, watching those two, albeit Jasper on the opposite side, you've got to sometimes hold your hands up and just say, wow, what a player. And, you know, Jimmy is that for us. Thank you, Ben. Your style of play brings people into the stadiums, and that's great fun for Test cricket. Thanks very much, Asha. Cheers. Cheers. Ben Stokes, captain of England, playing wonderful test cricket, aren't they? Now the Dream 11 game changer of the match. The winner gets a trophy and a cheque of one lakh. Prajapat, the award goes to Yashasvi Jaiswal. That magnificent double century in the first innings won him 274 fantasy points. And hopefully, We'll keep seeing batting like that from this young man for many years to come. Well played, Yashasvi as well. Now the SBI Life, Apne Liye, Apno Ke Liye Award. The winner gets a trophy and a cheque of one lakh. It's presented by Mr. Rajiv Srivastav for his all-round performance on the field and with the bat. Goes to Shubman Gill. A century in the second innings, four catches, lovely safe hands in the slips for Shubman Gill. Coming up next then, the Attenberg Smart Saver of the match. The winner gets a trophy and a check of one lakh to be presented by Mr. D. Vedanayagam. The award goes for overall fielding brilliance on the pitch. Once again to a wicket keeper, he was outstanding, Ben Folks. The captain Ben Stokes will receive the award on his behalf. Some of his catches staying low to the keepers, uh, to the bowlers rather, were absolutely fantastic. So Ben Fokes is our Attenberg Smart Saver of the Match Award winner. Now the Kampa Great Indian Strike of the Match, a trophy and a check of one lakh presented by Mr. P. R. K. Rao for outstanding drives on the field. It goes to Yashasvi Jaiswal. 22 boundaries for Yashasvi Jaiswal in this game, that entitles him to the Kampa Great Indian strike of the match. And now it's my very happy job to invite the winning captain Rohit Sharma. <laughs> Rohit. It must be such a luxury to call upon Jaspreet Bumrah in the form like that. Yeah, it is. I mean, look, uh, you know, he's a champion player for us. Uh, it's been a, it's been a while, you know, that he's doing the job for the team. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you win a game like that, uh, you, you know, you got to look at uh, the overall performance as well. Uh, we we were good with the bat, um, and then obviously. We know that you know winning a test match, uh, you know, in these kind of conditions is not going to be easy. Uh, we wanted our bowlers to step up, and they they did that. Yep. You watch this, your young opening partner, very closely. Two hundred in the first innings. How good is? What's your take on your chess Vijay as well? No, looks. Uh, I mean, look, looks like a very good player. Uh, understands his game really well. Um, you know, he's got a long way to go, of course. Uh, you know, he's just coming to the side now uh, and every opportunity is trying to make the most of it. Uh, that was an exceptional knock, what he did in the first day. Um, you know, uh, you know, long way to go. Like I said, um, you know, he's got a lot to offer to, the, uh, to, to our team. Uh, and I hope, uh, you know, he stays, uh, you know, quite humble uh, and focuses on what, what is needed for the team. A little bit more from the batting, would you like a little bit more? Yeah, look, I mean, look, uh, the, the wicket was really good to bat on. Uh, um, you know, that's where if I have to point anything, um, you know, a lot of the batters got the start but didn't convert. 
uh, into a big score uh, and something that we need, really need to look into. But again, uh, having said that, I do understand, you know, uh, they're very young, uh, they're very new to um, this form of the game. So obviously, uh, you know, uh, it'll, take it'll take some time for us. It's important from our side to give them confidence in this win. Obviously, uh, we'll give them a lot of confidence and just to go out there and play freely. As captain, what pleased you the most about this result? I think, uh, you know, uh, very, very proud of such a young squad uh, in terms of uh, the test matches that they've played, uh, you know, to come up against a team like that, uh, you know, won the first test match uh, and then to come out and play like that for us, uh, very, very positive. Um, you know, like I said, a lot of the guys are quite young uh, in terms of uh, playing uh, this form of the game for us. Uh, so, you know, it'll take some time, obviously, uh, to be absolutely spot on, but uh, you've got to give it to them uh, a little more time, a little more freedom as well. Uh, and that is something that we are constantly talking in the changing room, uh, that we want these guys to have some time in the middle, uh, go and pl play freely without any pressure. 1-1, one, one, going to the third test, what a series you're having. We're enjoying watching it, I'm sure you're enjoying playing it too. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, we know we were up against a good challenge. Uh, you know, uh, the last couple of years, England have been playing really good cricket. Uh, so, we know that it, it was not going to be an easy series for us. Uh, again, uh, you know, to win this game, uh, you know, quite pleasing. Uh, but again, we know the series is not ended here. Uh, with three more to go, obviously, we'll... We'll keep our check on it and uh, we'll make sure that we, we do most of the things right. You've got a week, you can put your feet up and then get back to Rajkot. Well played, yes, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Indian captain uh, Rohit Sharma there. Um, we could barely had the energy to muster a smile, um, let alone uh, any sort of sense of uh, triumph or, or celebration, Harmi. He's uh, looked, <laughs> looked like a boxer who'd gone 12 rounds and, uh, you know, um, he he didn't want to overstate anything, did he? He didn't want to overplay Jaiswal's innings, said he sl still has a long way to go. If he goes as far as we think he might, he'll have 10,000 runs. Yeah, he was. He, he played it down the uh, the role of Jaiswal, but wow, what an innings it was. Saying he obviously the, the learning has, has a lot to come. Um, he hasn't getting player of the match, though, Jaiswal. Jasper Brum was getting player of the match, so I was, uh, I was a little bit surprised by that, but yeah, Jaiswal's going to take some... Um, trophies home, wasn't he? They kept giving him trophies. He's going to need a, an excess baggage allowance like Talk Sports going on back to England. So, no, joking aside, I thought Jaiswal was brilliant. I thought Rohit Sharma sounded as though he was on the losing side there rather than on the winning side. And some you know, different comments to, to what I thought there would be. I thought he would have built his team up and pumped the tyres up of one or two of the players, but... Um, Possibly, is that an Indian captain thinking, you know, we've won a test match, but we haven't been at our best? Yeah, well, Jasprit Bumra, uh, it's not like he doesn't deserve uh, an accolade. Nine for 91. I also thought that uh, Jaisfal's innings was possibly uh, the bigger difference between the two teams. Uh, Chetan Narula, what did you think? Um, never mind the, the man of the match award. I mean, it, it, I, for once, I wouldn't have minded if they'd split it. But overall, a very very good performance given the circumstances India were in coming into this match yeah I mean <laughs> like I said on day one I, I did think India were a bit short <laughs> in terms of the runs they scored I mean uh, Jaiswal absolutely the, the big difference uh, if you look at uh, England's second innings right now no no batsman uh, apart from Crawley crossed 40 and that was the case for India's top order certainly um, and Yashasvi Jaiswal went to score a double hundred so that was a big big differentiator uh, between the two sides but I think uh, after scoring 396 on that pitch and this pitch has been really good for batting throughout this game I thought Jaspreet Bumrah was exceptional I, I, it was just a magical magical spell that he bowled on on, on day two and uh, yeah, I think uh, you either have to be a batter or bowler to be able to judge that. I mean, I know how he said that Bumrah should win the man of the match. I'm neither. <laughs> not a test batter, not a test bowler, so I can't really pick between the two. But uh, for now, I, I would definitely say yes, Cheswal being the differentiator in the first innings with those big, big runs. Going ahead, of course, uh, like Hami mentioned, you know, India probably not at, the, at their best in terms of uh, performances. Uh, I think individual performances st stood out, but not at their best in terms of the personnel. And uh, with hopes of Virat Kohli and Lokesh Rahul both uh, coming back for the third test match, I think uh, India will be able to put a stronger foot forward. 
And just quickly, obviously, Coley walks straight back into the team. Do yeah. Kyle, Rahul and uh, Ravindra Jadeja, if they're fit? <sighs> Jadeja, I don't think he's going to be fit for Rajkot. That's what I'm hearing. But if Lokesh Rahul is fit, I think Shreya Sayer will be worried about his spot. Shubman Gill, though, has... Uh, yeah, ended, I think, I think that debate is his. over now. <laughs> Thankfully, that debate is over. Because, like I said earlier, too, that is a huge investment India has made into Gill for the next foreseeable future. Well, Hami, we've got uh, many hours of travel ahead of us um, to contemplate uh, changes. I, you just had, did touch on um, the, the three-spinner, three three one-seamer policy. Um, do, do you think, irrespective of the pitch, that, they, that England will look to play a second seamer? I think they might. I, I really think they might. And I think it depends on Jack Leach's fitness. I think if Jack Leach is fit, then England might go in with Jack Leach, probably Tom Hartley, and then Joe Root, because of the experience that Leach brings brings you back. I think because they had two very inexperienced spin bowlers, or three very inexperienced spin bowlers, I think to, to just play two of them, I think that would have been difficult for for the two that actually played. So I think that is probably the reason why they, they went with three and just went with one one seam bowler. But I think if a Nicole Light idea when Ben gets to Rajkot and he looks at the surface and if the surface is anywhere near like the two we've had so far, I think he might think about going in with Jack Leach's experience as one of the spinners, Tom Hartley, who gives you the all-round um, all package, even though I think Cho Bashir bowled very, very impressively and I, I think he's probably a better spin bowler than, than Tom Hartley, but the package is uh, obviously a hell of a lot different with the field and then with the, uh, with the batting. So I think I'd go with Jack Leach, Tom Hartley and Joe Root. And then you'd have, for me, I would have Jimmy Anderson and Mark Wood. I think Mark Wood would give me the point of difference that, pace-wise, Jasper Bummers give to uh, to England, so uh, to India. So I think that would be the way I would be thinking about my team selection going into uh, what will be a, a very, very eagerly awaited third test match with a series nicely poised at 1-1. We're going to hear imminently from uh, Ben Stokes speaking to our very own Andrew McKenna, who's uh, over at the post-match presentation. Um, just uh, he's speaking to Ben now. I wanted to ask you again about Abu Dhabi and this policy that you and I were both far from convinced about in the build-up to the series. Not just in the build-up, but um, we, we, I think our eyebrows were even further raised by the fact that they were going, always planning to go back to Abu Dhabi twice after this test match and again after the fourth between the fifth test. But... Um, You've you've toured. You've been on long tours. You know how uh, demanding it, it can be. It's all very well saying, well, you know, ha have a day off and uh, and stay in your hotel room, but it's still a hotel room, and you know, it, it's it it's wearing. It, it it wears you down. It tires you down. And for decades and decades, for for over over half a century, touring teams have, have come to India and found it revealing and fascinating and challenging and exhausting so the idea of actually going back to Abu Dhabi where there is no media d demand no spotlight um, you can be anonymous really and they can they can go and play golf as they enjoy so much and really refresh and and come back with you know having had seven f solid days away from the media away from the spotlight away from the the constant demands of india sort of it does make sense doesn't it it makes it makes perfect sense i never had a problem with it, this this abu dhabi trip my problem was with the last abu uh, the last abu dhabi trip the first one the one that was giving them no real indian time preparation from and this is what i was this is what i was getting at when i i said what i said on the uh, on the following on and with you in in the studio, it was about three young seam, uh, three young spin bowlers have not played in India before, not bowled in India before, in just three days. Was that was the only thing I was I had an issue with. I, I'd never had an issue with how they were going to prepare because I knew they were going to work hard. This is a fit side. This is a mentally strong side. This is a side that doesn't give anything away when it comes to chasing a ball to the boundary or diving full length. We've seen that. We've heard from Paul Collin with that coming. But on tours I've been on, I don't think I've ever gone a 10-day, 9-day gap without a game. There's always been a game on. There's always been... You might not... You might have been a, a senior bowler played in the second test match, but then there was a 3-day game going on for the lads who aren't playing or haven't been able to play in between. Them days have long gone. So 
I've never had a problem with this Abu Dhabi trip. The only problem I had was the first one. I think this one makes a huge amount of sense. Golf is great. I, I love playing golf, but even when I play cricket, I love playing. Uh, you, you, the golf part of it makes you know people relax as well as you know they spend four hours on your feet and you know the professional cricketers who has to spend six and seven hours on their feet so that's not an issue dear to do it at 11 o'clock in the midday sun but and all the way through but i think creating an environment is what mccullum and stokes do and i think going off away from the spotlight makes a huge amount of sense and then they can relax then they can you know be themselves away from the media and the goldfish bowl is what indian tours become so um I, i'd never had a problem with the, this Abu Dhabi trip or the next one if they do go back between the fourth and the fifth test match the only issue i had on the preparation side was the was the initial time they had there in the less time they had here but as it stands and as it's gone um i was proved wrong because they've came here hit the ground running i don't think i don't think the the, the young bowlers have bowled you know massive sort of great lines and lengths but I still don't think being out here for another for a, a week earlier would have make a difference I think the reasons why they have been a little bit inconsistent out here is more down to the fact that they're in the infancy of their first class career never mind their test match career but I think the 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 innocence of youth I think has give this side you know so much bounce and so much um so much vigor where I think they've they've They've, they've bounced off each other very, very well. So I think all in all, I was wrong to go too hard in the preparation stuff. But like I said you know, a couple of weeks ago, I never had a problem about them going back for this one because I think it, it is very, very important to get away, recharge and come back for what is two grueling test matches. I've played in Rich Rajkot, been to Ran played in Ranchi. Uh, they're two different places. They're not Vishkapatnam on the coast. They're not the big city of, of Hyderabad. Um, they're going to be different challenges when they go there for them, that two and a half week period uh, of this tour. Okay, let's uh, hear from Ben Stokes talking to Andrew McKenna and we'll get a final word for you afterwards. Skipper, it wasn't meant to be in the end. Uh, no, uh, look, obviously, you know, disappointed to come out on the wrong side of the result this week. Um, but I think, you know, again, an unbelievable game to be a part of. Um, you know, I think everyone who's come here and supported, you know, um, in India and, you know, even back home have got up to watch. I think they would, they would have loved what they've seen over the last four days. The fact that even in the commentary we were talking about it as a possibility that England could make 399 to win a game batting last in India says so much. And the fact that you got to just about 100 short in the end, that's a, still a remarkable effort. Um, yeah, well, I think, see, you've spent some years trying to get what is baseball. Uh, it's a word that we don't like, but I, I think it's the, the mentality in which we go out with is actually that's what it is. Um, and... We have an unbelievable belief in ourselves that we can accomplish, you know, some pretty special things out on the field. And um, the way in which we we go about things is, is I, I guess, is to the reason why there was a lot of people who might not necessarily a couple of years ago thought we had any chance in hell of doing that. Um, but maybe went to bed last night thinking, you know, what, I'm going to get up and watch this or I think England are going to chase us down. And if I was to sum up, if I had to sum up what baseball is, I think it, it's, it's that mentality. What was your feeling then as you arrived at the ground this morning? What were you thinking? Uh, I was, yeah, I was pretty chilled as always, to be honest. It's, yeah. It means the series is one all, three to play for, but now you've got a break. You're going to head back to Abu Dhabi just to recharge the batteries, clear the mind. Well, how much cricket will there be in those few days? Uh, yeah, I think you know it's been a very you know, especially the two tests. It's been you know pretty. Pretty full on for everyone, um, you know, not just physically, but I think also emotionally. You know, uh, that can take it out of you when you have games like this um, that are sort of neither here or there at the end of every day until the end. Um, so yeah, look, it's great that we're we're going back to Abu Dhabi. The guys are getting to see their families um, and have some downtime, and, and then we head to Rajkot, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll be preparing for that game like we have done every other game. We've spoken a lot about batting. We've spoken a lot about bowling, fielding this game was absolutely sensational. Ben Folks has just got the award for, for fielder of the game with standing up, not an easy thing to do. And your catch, oh my goodness. I mean, that's an absolute worldie. I know a lot of work goes into fielding and little things like that can make differences. Yeah, again, that's, it's down to our attitude and, and our mindset around what we actually want to do. Um, you know, cricket has obviously spoken a lot about bat and ball, but a massive part of the game is field. 
uh, is in the field, you know, not only skill wise, but also your energy levels and, and your commitment to what you want to do. And, you know, I think regardless of where we find ourselves in the field, whether we're sort of struggling to get wickets or we're feeling like we're, I don't know, as long, and I, and I think I'd see the output that everyone is diving around cons- constantly all the time. There's never a dull moment. Everyone is always up on their toes wanting to, you know, pull off a full length diving stop or take that catch that's going to change the momentum back into our way because, you know, I never feel like we're, we are, you know, behind the game or something like that. And I think that just shows in the attitude of everyone that regardless of where we're at, you're going to see that effort and that commitment in the field because bowling out here in India is tough, it's hot. So, you know, backing up the bowlers in the field is the least we can do. One of the things that I notice about this team is you don't get too high and you don't get too low. You're, you're really even about the whole thing. What was the dressing room? You'd just been in the dressing room for a few minutes there. On the back of a loss, what was it like? Yeah, I mean, I made that point last week um, that if we hadn't, you know, taken that victory last week, um, I would like us to still be in this mood. Um, Obviously, we won last week, so we were very, you know, how we were. But made a point if, if we weren't, like, if we didn't win, I would still like us to be like this because you've got to ride the wave of emotions that this great game gives to you, um, and just staying as perfectly level as you possibly can. I think is a great way of not getting yeah, um, too far ahead of yourself, but also not feeling too down on yourself. Um, you know, it's a five-match test series. We've still got a lot more cricket to play, um, and when you break it down like that, you know, it's one-one. There's still three games to go, um, and if we do end up you know, winning the series, this game here we've lost, well, it won't really mean too much. So just, yeah, just trying to stay as level as you possibly can and just wave everything that this game um, throws at you. Good luck. Thank you very much. Bumrah once again to Crawley. Fuller delivery on the off stump. What a glorious drive down the ground for four. And a big, big appeal this time and he's out. That's as close as you'll ever get in LBW, I think. If you missed it, the highest score by any touring team in India in the fourth innings. Forget to win. It, the highest ever score is 299. England have got to go 100 past that. Crawley's going to try and do it, though, because he comes down the pitch to Axar and plays a drive for four. That's a magnificent shot by Zach Crawley, and he goes to 50. This is uh, quite something. Ashwin goes in, takes the edge, and that is caught. Pope dismissed at slip. Turn and bounce on that occasion. Rohit holds on to it. But it brings Joe Root, one of the best players in the world, to the crease. It's a big innings for Joe. Down the wicket comes Joe Root, and he's top edged into backward point. He's played this running slog sweep. And Root has perished. And as soon as he made contact with the ball, you see in his eyes just roll as to say, oh, what have I done? The crowd is also in anticipation of a great tantalising finish. And what a shot that run from Johnny Besto. Kuldeep once again. And this one comes in. Big, big shout. Stayed low as well. Gets the wicket that India desperately wanted. Zach Crawley. The ball coming in. Hits Besto. On the crease, 194 for six. Ashwin once again, and Hartley down the track, has given it uh, some air and will clear the ropes at long on for six. Ashwin again to Hartley, as he steps out once again, gives it uh, some air and uh, clears the rope. Goes in and bowls, and it's a return catch. Folks is dismissed. He is done by the slower one. Balls. Edge gone, taken by keeper Shrika Barat. Shoaib Bashir is on his way. England are nine down. India are going to win the test match. It's going to be 1-1 going to the third. Three slips waiting in anticipation as Bumra is in. Balls. Bowled him! Hardly loses his off stump. Jasprit Bumra has finished the test match in style. And England have been bowled out for 292. India win by 106 runs to square the series. The mouth-watering prospect of three test matches still to come.